So now let's talk about the AWS Snow family. So it represents a highly secure portable devices that has two use cases within AWS. Either it's used to collect and process data at the edge or to migrate data in and out of AWS. So we have two use cases, the data migration, and for this we have three different types of devices within the Snow family. We have the Snow Cone, the Snowball Edge, and the Snowmobile. And for the second use case, edge computing, we have the Snow Cone and the Snowball Edge. So we'll first tackle the data migration subject and then the edge computing. So why do we want to do data migration with the AWS Snow family? Well, if we look at the time it takes to transfer a lot of data over the network, it can take a lot of time. So for example, if we want to transfer 100 terabytes over a one gigabits per second uh, network line, it will take us 12 days to achieve it, okay? And so obviously if we do a petabyte, it will take forever and so on. So as we can see, sometimes we just want the data to get to AWS fast. And the challenge is that sometimes on top of having a, a small network transfer, you have limited connectivity, limited bandwidth, bandwidth, sorry, transferring data over the network may cost you some money, okay? It's not free to use a network. It could be that also the bandwidth is shared. For example, if you uh, download a video from AWS and you ten, download 10 terabytes of data, you know maybe you're going to block your entire office because you're maximizing the bandwidth within your office. Um, and then maybe the connection is not stable enough, so you have to retry and so on. So all these reasons make a case for Snow Family. So the Snow Family are offline devices that allow you to perform data migrations. So AWS will send you an actual physical device by, you know, by the post office, and then you load your data onto it and then you send it back to AWS. So the rule of thumb is that if it takes more than a week to transfer data over the network, then you should use a snowball device, for example. So to really explain how that works, let's take an example. If you wanted to directly upload a file into Amazon S3, we have the client sends the data into Amazon S3. Very easy, right? But with the Snow family, for example, with a Snowball device, the client requests a Snowball device. We receive it via the post, okay? AWS will deliver the device to us. We load the data directly onto the devices locally, and then we ship back the device to AWS into an AWS facility. Then they will take the device and they will plug it into their own infrastructure. And then the data will be imported or exported based on what you want to do to an Amazon S3 bucket and you're good to go. So really, it is a way to transfer data to AWS, but through the physical route, not the network route. Okay, so now, what sort of devices do we have? We have the Snowball Edge. And Snowball Edge is a huge box, as you can see. And it is going to be used to move terabytes or petabytes of data in and out of AWS. It's going to be an alternative to moving data over the network, as we've seen. We're going to pay per data transfer job. And the interface within the Snowball Edge is going to provide a block storage or Amazon S3 compatible object storage. So we have two flavors for the Snowball Edge. We have the Snowball Edge storage optimized, which is going to give us 80 terabytes of hardware um, of a hardware disk uh, capacity, which works for block volume or S3 compatible object storage. And we have the Snowball Edge compute optimized, which is going to give us 42 terabytes of HDD capacity. So really, if we want to have more storage, obviously, we want to get the flavor that is called Snowball Edge Storage Optimized. So the use case for a Snowball Edge for data transfers so far is to do a large data cloud migration, to decommission a data center, or maybe to do disaster recovery by backing up your data into AWS. So that's for the first option. The second option is called AWS Snow Cone. And Snow Cone is a cute little name because it is a cute little thing. This is a much smaller device. As we can see, we can see an Ethernet port on it. So Snow Cone is much smaller than a Snowball uh, Edge. And this is a small portable computing anywhere, rugged and secure, and it can withstand harsh environments. So it can go uh, in desert, it can go in the water. It's really, really uh, light and secure. So this device is going to be used for edge computing, storage and data transfer, but obviously of much smaller size and as such, you can store eight terabytes of storage on a snow cone. So much less, about 10 times less than the Snowball Edge storage optimized device. 
So you should use a snow cone where a snowball does not fit. So for example, in space constrained environment, you can even put a snow cone on top of a drone if you wanted to. You must provide your own battery and cables and it can be sent back to AWS offline or you can even connect it to the network and it will use AWS data sync to send the data back over the network. So imagine you have a snow cone into an environment that doesn't have any network connectivity. It will collect and collect and collect and collect data. And then you go back home, you go to your data center, you take the snow cone and you plug it into your data center and automatically the data is being transferred to AWS. Or you can just send it back again offline to AWS, but you have two options with the snow cone. And then Snowmobile is an actual truck. So when they announced it, they actually took a truck on stage to show that it was an actual truck that is going to transfer data. And so with the Snowmobile, you can transfer exabytes of data. So one exabyte is 1,000 petabytes is 1 million terabytes. And each Snowmobile will have 100 petabytes of capacity. So if you wanted to reach uh, one exabyte of data, you need to order 10 Snowmobiles. It's high security, it's temperature control, there's GPS, 24-7 video surveillance, so it's quite a secure way to transfer your data. And it's a better use case than Snowball if you start transferring more than 10 petabytes of data. So as a summary, for data migration, we have three options. We have Snowcone, Snowball Edge, Snowmobile, and each come with different storage capacities, so 8 terabytes, 80 terabytes, and 100 petabytes. The migration size that's recommended by AWS is a snow cone is up to 24 terabytes. For Snowball Edge, it's up to petabytes and it's offline because you have to send it back to AWS. And for Snowmobile, the use case is up to exabytes of data. Data Sync Agent is pre-installed on a snow cone because you can plug it to a network and have Data Sync send the data over the network to AWS as well. And for Snowball Edge, you can do storage clustering so you can put up to 15 Snowball Edges together to increase the storage size. Okay, so how do we use a Snow Family device? Well, you request the device from the console for delivery, and we'll see this in the hands-on. Then we install the Snowball client, or we use AWS Ops Hub that we'll see in this lecture on your servers. Then we connect the Snowball to the, to the servers and start copying the files in the clients. Then we ship back the device when we're ready. It will go straight to the right AWS facility thanks to an e-ink marker. And the data will be load, loaded onto an S3 bucket. And then the snowball will be completely wiped according to the highest security measures. So that's for the data migration. And that was originally one and the only use case for snowball devices. But the second use case now for the snow family is called edge computing. And so edge computing is when you process data while it's being created at an edge location. So what is an edge location? Well, an edge location is anything that really doesn't have internet or that is far away from a cloud. So for example, if you have a truck on the road or if you have a ship on the sea or a mining station on the ground, all these things can be called edge locations because they can produce data, but they may not necessarily have internet connectivity. So either limited connectivity or no internet access or no access to computing power. And so you may still want to run computation, data processing at these locations. And for this, we need edge computing. And so to do edge computing, we can order a Snowball Edge device or a snow cone and have it embedded into these edge locations and start doing edge computing. So the use cases of edge computing is to pre-process data, do machine learning at the edge, so without it going back to the cloud, transcode major streams in advance, and Eventually, if need be, if you need to transfer the data back into AWS, you can ship back the device for your snow cone or your snowball edge. So really, you start processing the data very, very close to where it's being created, and then you ship it back to AWS. So for edge computing, what do we have? We have the snow cone, and it comes with two CPUs, four gigabytes of memory, has wired or wireless access, so Wi-Fi. It's powered by USB-C and, or, or, and an optional battery. Then for Snowball Edge, it's compute optimized. So we have two different flavors again. So the compute optimized one has 52 vCPUs, 200 gigabytes of RAM, and an optional GPU if you wanted to do video processing or machine learning. Uh, we have 42 terabytes of usable storage. And for the Snowball Edge that is storage optimized, we have 40 CPUs, so less, and 80 gigabytes of RAM, so again, less RAM as well. We have object storage clustering available for the storage. And all of these devices can run either EC2 instances within them 
or Lambda functions using the service called AWS IoT Greengrass. And if you do edge computing, then you may want to have these devices in your facilities, in your trucks, in your boats for a very long time. And so therefore, you have long-term deployment options where you can get a discounted pricing if you borrow these devices for one or three years. Finally, for the Snow family, there is Snow, uh, uh, sorry, Upsub. So historically, when you were using these devices, you needed a CLI, so a common line interface tool to deal with them, and it was very, very difficult. And so AWS recognizes that. And so they've created AppsHub, which is a software that you install on your computer or laptop. So it's not something you use on the cloud. It's something you have to download on your computer. And then once it's connected, it's going to give you a graphical interface to connect to your Snow devices and configure them and use them, which is very, very handy. So this is allows you to do unlocking and configuring single or cluster devices, transferring files, launching and managing instances. So EC2 instances running on Snow family devices, monitor device metrics, and launch compatible AWS services on your devices, for example, EC2 instances, use data sync, or a network file system. So that's it for the Snow family. I hope you liked it, and I will see you in the next lecture.